Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shug Mohammed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa visited today the intellectual and author Dr. Mohammed bin Jabir bin Al Ansari at his residence. His Majesty the King wished Dr. Al Ansari abundant health and happiness, commending his efforts in serving Bahrain in the intellectual, literary, and political fields. He also lauded Dr. Al Ansari's contributions in promoting Arab culture and enriching Bahraini and Arab libraries with his valuable books. His Majesty the King expressed Bahrain's pride in Dr. Al-Ansari being one of the prominent Bahrainis in the intellectual, cultural and literary history. He hailed his dedication in advocating the causes of the nation, thus contributing to fostering democracy and reform and depending Bahrain's issues. He also urged all writers to follow in the steps of Dr. Al-Ansari and benefit from his lifetime works. His Majesty the King hailed Dr. Al-Ansari's reputation among prominent Arab and international figures, commanding his writings, which highlight key issues relating to the Arabian Gulf region. For his part, Dr. Al-Ansari expressed thanks to His Majesty the King for his visit, hailing his role in initiating the reform and democratic approach, which resulted in promoting Bahrain in regional and international forums. He also wished His Majesty the King abundant health and happiness. The cabinet held its weekly session today at the Dhabiya Palace, chaired by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa. The cabinet congratulated His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, and the people of Bahrain on the occasion of the National Day celebrations on the 16th to 17th of December, the anniversary of the establishment of the modern state of Bahrain as an Arab and Muslim country in 1783 by its founder Ahmed al-Fatih, the 46th anniversary of its accession to the UN as a full member, and the 18th anniversary of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. The cabinet noted Bahrain's achievements in various fields throughout its comprehensive development march that strengthened its regional and international status. The Crown Prince was briefed on the results of his visit to the United States and the talks held with President Donald Trump and senior officials in the U.S. administration. The cabinet praised the results of His Royal Highness's successful visit, including the important bilateral agreements signed that will develop cooperation between the two countries in the fields of military, economy and trade. On the occasion of Martyrs' Day on December 17th, the cabinet recalled the sacrifices of the martyrs of duty who sacrificed their lives to defend the country and protect its gains. The cabinet affirmed that Martyrs' Day is a national occasion but comes in appreciation and honor of the country's martyrs. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa reviewed the results of the Gulf Cooperation Council summit held recently in Kuwait and the recommendations and decisions adopted by the summit. The cabinet hailed the preparations of Kuwait for the GCC summit under the leadership of His Highness Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Sabah Al Ahmed Al Jabir Al Sabah, but aided in the success of the summit and its results that support the march of the GCC Council. The cabinet congratulated the Minister of Interior and Ministry affiliates on the occasion of Bahraini Police Day, hailing their efforts in maintaining security and stability and protecting the security and safety of citizens and residents. The cabinet also praised the 13th Manama Dialogue Forum held in Bahrain in cooperation with the International Institution of Strategic Studies which discussed the necessity of com to combat terrorism and promote peace. The cabinet affirmed Bahrain's support under the leadership of His Majesty the King to the Palestinian cause and its full support for the return of the Palestinian people to their territory and to regain their legitimate rights, forefront of which is its right to self-determination and the establishment of its Palestinian state with Jerusalem as its capital and the importance of avoiding any decisions that disrupt ongoing efforts to revive the peace process. The cabinet also praised the stance of the Arab League regarding Jerusalem and the emergency meeting of Arab ministers of foreign affairs which was recently held in Cairo and the Arab and Islamic countries' stances towards the Palestinian cause. The council reviewed the service and developmental projects identified by the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, the Ministry of Housing and the Ministry of Education during their inspection visits to the cities and villages of the kingdom in line with the directives of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister. The Council also reviewed the completed infrastructure services in Al Draz, Bani Jamra, Umm Al Hassam, Sitra, and Al Nabi Saleh. It had been decided to increase the distribution of housing units to residents in Al Draz, Bani Jamra, Danusan, and Al Graya in the northern city by 324 housing units, as well as an increase of 748 units in the housing projects of Sitra Village and East Sitra for Sitra's residents. 
a new primary intermediate school is under construction in Malchia, as well as an intermediate school in Galali and a new secondary school in Mharag. Two new academic buildings will be built in two primary intermediate schools in Abdeya. The council directed the Minister of Finance to sign a contract with the operating company of Bahrain Credit Information Center on behalf of all ministries and government authorities in the center to facilitate the exchange of credit information between members in the center. The council referred a draft law on improving the kingdom's joining an agreement of establishing the Asian Bank to invest in infrastructure to the Ministerial Committee for Legal Affairs in line with the memorandum submitted by the Minister of Finance. The Council discussed a draft agreement on avoiding double taxation on income and capital taxes and preventing tax evasion between the Kingdom and the Swiss Federal Union. The Council approved a draft law amending documentation transaction fees and the licensing fees for the notary public to improve the quality, efficiency and speed of services. The Council approved adopting the Air National Air Transport Facilitation Program and establishing the National Committee for Air Transport Facilitation. The Council also discussed forming a National Committee for Air Transport Facilitation that follows up on the implementation of the National Air Transport Facilitation Program. The Council referred to the Legislative Authority a draft law on amending the General Budget Law. It also approved the government's response to a proposal on the parking and use of trucks and vehicles in residential neighborhoods. Under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Works and Youth Affairs, Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Nat Charity Organization, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al-Khalifa, Sif Mall celebrated the 20th anniversary of its establishment in the presence of a number of guests, the Board of Directors of Sif Properties and the Executive Management of the company. His Highness praised the great support given to the national economy by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and his efforts to promote a strong economic system for present and future generations. He praised His Majesty's directives to grant orphans and widows under the umbrella of the Royal Charity Organization 30% of the company's shares in support of charity and humanitarian work. His Highness hailed the support of the government led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the continuous support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, as well as those who contributed to supporting and developing this vital economic edifice. His Highness extended sincere congratulations to the Safe Properties Company on its 20th anniversary, describing it as a qualitative addition to Bahraini economy. He praised the company's prominent role through its developmental, charitable and social projects, which reflect the bright image of the national institutions which best serve the kingdom. He expressed his pride of the Royal Charity Organization for its contribution to this national company, represented by Dr. Mustafa Sayed as Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors. His Highness praised the developmental growth witnessed by the country at the company, I'm sorry, as one of the most important tourist, commercial and economic destinations for citizens, residents, visitors and tourists, which significantly contributes in driving the growth and developmental in the area surrounding Seif Mall. Chairman of the Seif Properties, Isa Najibi, expressed his deep gratitude to His Majesty the King for his directives to provide 30% of company shares to the Royal Charity Organization, which in turn granted it to needy families, orphans and widows. Vice Chairman of the Board of Directors, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, praised the generous patronage of the wise leadership and government to the economy and commended the generous patronage of His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al-Khalifa and his participation in Seif Properties' 20th anniversary celebration. His Highness Sheikh Nasser then honored a number of people and he also received a commemorative gift on this occasion.
The Prime Minister of Cape Verde, Jose Ulysses de Pina, received first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, Honorary President of Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, and founder of KHK MMA, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, on the sidelines of His Highness's visit to attend the competitions of the African Heavyweight Boxing Championship, which began yesterday, with the final match between KHK boxing team member Faisal Arami and the Congolese boxer Junior Maximus took place. His Highness Sheikh Khalid conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to the President of Cape Verde and his wishes of further progress. He also conveyed the greetings of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa to the Cape Verdean Prime Minister. His Highness Sheikh Khalid also extended the wishes of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Chairman of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasr bin Hamad Al Khalifa to Cape Verde of success in the field of youth and sports. His Highness Sheikh Khalid then reviewed the Cape Verdean Prime Minister ways to further develop bilateral relations at all levels, especially in the field of sports, noting the developments of the Cape Verde in various areas. He also expressed congratulations to Cape Verde for the success of the competition, which reflects its keenness to host international sports events, affirming support to all efforts that aim at promoting combat sports. Sheikh Khalid and the Cape Verdean Prime Minister exchanged commemorative gifts. For his part, the Cape Verdean Prime Minister affirmed that the visit of His Highness Sheikh Khalid will pave the way for further cooperation and joint coordination between the two countries in various fields, affirming his country's readiness for any upcoming visits or discussions that can serve the the development process in both countries. Achieving comprehensive security is a priority that requires intensifying efforts and enhancing performance to provide advanced security services with efficiency and accuracy. In this context, the General Directorate of Ports is working to fulfill its mission to securing the land, naval and airports of the Kingdom. More in this report. Within the framework of achieving comprehensive security, which is concerned with the safety of the homeland and the people, the General Directorate of Ports ensures the movement of people and goods into the country and provides vital facilities through a series of security plans. We intensify security efforts at land ports, allow cooperation with all authorities concerned, develop mechanisms to monitor and protect ports. We also deploy patrols and have an operations center to facilitate travel procedures, control entry and exit, and counter the smuggling of contraband. We cooperate with the customs with regard to inspection and the referral of smuggling cases to the directorate. Also, we take the necessary measures for public safety and perform security screenings for crime prevention. Some of the things that the directorate works on is taking the necessary measures to counter cross-border crimes, infiltration and smuggling of contrabands, all of which are things that fall under the concept of maintaining comprehensive security. There is a security plan that the Directorate of Ports and Maritime Navigation Affairs follow to maintain the safety and security of travelers. We take the necessary security measures by guarding vital locations, deploying patrols round the clock, monitoring the CCTV of the operations center to prevent crimes at the naval borders, such as entering the kingdom illegally and contraband smuggling. We also facilitate travel procedures for tourists and commercial vessels. The General Directorate of Port Security, represented by the Bahrain International Airport Police Directorate, is concerned with maintaining airports through securing the national airport and its facilities by activating security through gates and security cameras, as well as checking on individual security permits and vehicles that require entries to restricted areas. There is also the inspection procedures of individuals through new devices which will maintain the safety of all civil aviation users in the Kingdom of Bahrain. It is only normal for security work at the ports and borders of the Kingdom to be based on plans that are continuously updated and are based on training and creating scenarios for different situations. This affirms that the ports of Bahrain will remain safe with the dedication of ports policemen to carry out their duties. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohamed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,265.09 points, marking a decrease of 0.35 points below last closing. 
The decrease was in the services and industrial sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector with 66.89% of total shares. 54 transactions included 3,526,287 shares, worth 572,325 Bahraini dinars. The CBB's 70 million BD issue of this week of government treasury bills has been oversubscribed by 117%. The bills carrying a maturity of 91 days are issued by the CBB on behalf of the government of Bahrain. The weighted average rate of interest is 2.95% compared to 2.84% for the previous issue. The approximate average price for the issue was 99.26% with the lowest accepted price being 99.2%. Bahrain Islamic Bank has moderated a session in the Islamic Finance News Conference in Saudi Arabia. The session discussed the advancement of technology within the financial institution in Saudi Arabia, highlighting the opportunities and challenges, as well as the industry shifts and development in product and delivery channels. CEO of BISB said the bank takes a leadership role in the innovation and fintech field to, to become one of the voices for Bahrain's latest fintech drive.